Hi there, um, I want to talk to you today um, about neck tension and how it can affect the jaw and the upper back and how a lot of it is primarily postural. So what tends to happen with the human body is that as gravity puts compression on us and as we get stressed, uh, our posture changes. So essentially we go from a nice upright position to a of a slouch forward head forward position with a neck that then extends. Con uh, consequently to this, you can end up with a lot of compression at the back of the neck here. Now, there are nerves that come from the back of the neck, they go to the side here, and above the head here as well, and cause a lot of irritation through here. It can even affect the muscles on the side of the head, which then cause you to clamp down on your jaw and make things worse. Over a period of time, this can affect the muscles in the front here as well, the stenocolor muscles, which come from the back of the head here, going down to the front, and all this shortens and pulls everything forward, creating more pressure. As you experience more and more pain and more and more discomfort, there's often a stress response, so you feel worse in yourself because of it. That causes you to hyperventilate, and that causes the shoulders to come up even more. So you start to use the scaling muscles on the inside here of the neck, going down to here. And then that lifts up even further and it further compounds the problem because then it adds to the gravitational compression by adding pressure from below and through the muscles. Okay, so the fascia joints are particularly irritated, which then, of course, aggravates the head, gives you more headaches, and of course, creates more jaw pain in the run as well. Of course, very often pain itself will cause you to grind your teeth and your jaw, so you get a vicious cycle. So, you have to try and break the cycle. And one way to do it is work on a posture overall. And the second way to work on it is working locally at the symptomatic site. So what can you can do, first of all, globally, the first thing you can do is try to calm yourself down. The way we do this is by using breathing. Now, from my understanding, uh, when you're using your nose to breathe, there are certain areas or receptors inside the nose that send signals to your brain. Okay, we help to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part of your body that helps you to relax. Now, when you're breathing through your mouth a lot, there are other uh, nerves that switch on your sympathetic nervous system. So, just by varying where you're breathing from can even affect uh, your your uh, your nervous system. So, we want to get the the calm parasympathetic nervous system stimulated. So, we're going to be breathing in through our nose and then out through our mouth. Have you also noticed when you're breathing in through your nose, it's hard to get air in as opposed to your mouth? because obviously this is a big orifice. Now one thing you often see with people in the hyperventilation is that they can't get air out, okay? But they can get it in, no problems at all, because they're breathing too much in all the time. They just, they, they, can't, get, get it, they can't get a good supply of air in and out, so you can then get all kinds of horrible problems as a result, which then tends to make you more stressed and make everything worse. So anyway, cut long story short, let's see what we can actually do. So what I like to do with most people is I, I get you to lay down, for about two minutes, breathing in slowly and deeply through your nose, or in through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay, so we're getting less air in and more out. Okay, but it's a slower, consistent breath. Okay, which just helps to calm your body and your brain down. And you need to do this for about two minutes just to create a pattern. Okay, once you've done that, then get yourself up. And we're going to start working on the posture and we're going to use the same breathing techniques the whole time now in some other videos i've worked on a standing exercise so like this find yourself a wall stand up against it hold your tummy in now my legs are touching the wall and my spine should be touching the wall obviously the whole spine won't touch the wall because most people have got a bit of an arch here and of course you've got a bit of an arch here in your head as well but overall you want to try to flatten your whole spine Make your arms turn outwards, placing the our palms flat against the wall and squeeze your shoulder blades together and then aim to go down. The reason your arms are this way and not up here because you're aiming to pull yourself down, so stretching the shoulders in a downwards position. And this is going to be quite a battle because you need to hold your tummy in, forcing your back against the wall. Think in particular of the sternum, so there's a, the sternum ends here and you want to put, make sure this area here just beneath the shoulder blades is touching the wall, okay? That's so a full study. At the same time, I think about your neck. Draw your, your chin into your chest to lengthen your neck, okay? Try to flatten your spine or the back of the neck against the wall. You're not gonna flatten the whole thing, don't worry. Okay, but as you do this, of course, you, you want to push your body out. So then you've now got to force this back. So there's a battle going on between the upper part of your body and the lower part of your body, forcing your body back and forth towards the wall. 
Keep squeezing the shoulder blades together, of course, and keep the arms nice and flat. Now, once you think you've got about the right position, now start your breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Keep the tummy tucked in the whole time. And hold up there. And as before, do this for about two minutes. I like to do two minutes because two minutes is enough time for your body to adjust to what's going on and to work those postural muscles, what we call the spinal erectors, to get them working hard to pull everything back in a nice upright position. Now, I've said two minutes, okay, but you can go for up to five, and ideally you want to work for up to five minutes. After you've done this, you'll notice your posture feels so much better just from pulling yourself back in those, into the upright position. Now, once you've done that, you may want to start working on all the other muscles as well in your body. So, uh, as I was saying before, sometimes the issues with the shoulders. So, um, you can just simply start off by just dropping your chin to your chest. We're now going to put some movement through there. So, chin to your chest, and then up to the ceiling, and chin to your chest, then up to the ceiling. Now, you may find as you're doing this that the extension movement is too much, okay? So don't go back so far. If you want to, just go forward and then come back up to an upright position and leave that there. But either way, nice slow movements. Breathe out as you go down and breathe in as you come back up again. Imagine you're like a balloon, you're inflating. You, as you inflate it, it goes up. You deflate it, it goes down. So the next one. So deflation and inflation. And all the while, keep breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. So do about 10 of those, or however many you feel is comfortable, and then try some rotation. So, so same thing, breathe in to sit yourself up, and breathe out, and turn to one side, and breathe in, and come back to the middle again. Breathe out, and go to one side, and breathe in, and come back to the middle again. Again, try about 10 of these. And then once you've done that, you can then start to introduce the rotation, which I've been through before. Very simply, dropping your head forward, and I like to do partial rotation. I roll slightly to the side and I go to where I can feel a tension point. Now, I've already got a tension point here on the side of my neck. Now, that's my posterior scalene, which goes down here from the transverse processes of the uh, neck muscle uh, joints, rather, and they go down into the upper ribs, especially the second rib here. So I've got, I'm going to hold that position there. And now I'm going to start to go to put some extension through, so I'm, look, I'm basically letting my head come up towards the ceiling slightly. And again, I've got a bit more tension. I can feel that down the middle scalene here. And I go hold that until it starts to relax. And then I'm going to go a bit further back. And now I've got a little bit of anterior scalene here and a sternocleidomastoid. Now, with the sternocleidomastoid, if you want to, you can put a bit more pressure through. You can use your fingers gently placing the pads of your hand here. And you can push against the muscle this way or along the muscle if you prefer. You may want to use a bit of oil with this. Just pull through like that. Or as I've done before, you can use a, a big elastic band to do this. And then once you've done that, bring it back to the middle again. Don't spend more than about two minutes on each direction because these are small muscles. As you pull them really hard, you can essentially pull out all the blood from within them and you get a bit of lactic acid build up if you're not careful, and then you can actually make it worse. Same thing on the other side, remember, drop forward as you breathe out, and then roll very carefully to the side. And you're looking to find the tension points in your neck. As you're doing this, of course, you can actually tuck your chin into your chest a bit more to increase the tension here, or you can go into more extension if you prefer. But either way, keep rolling as you find those tense points. And then, like I said before, ideally you want to get to a point where here now I've, I've, my, my head is in a little bit of extension and side bending right. But as it's rolling backwards, it's starting to rotate slightly to the left. So we're getting that sternocleidomastoid muscle, the one that comes from the back of the head here, all the way down to the collarbone. And again, place your hand against this. A little bit of pressure if you want. As I do that, I can feel pain in my arm or numbness almost. But that's the nerves where they're coming out of the neck. They're very tight, been compressed. Don't overdo this. If you feel pain in your arm, it's particularly bad. You may want to take a rest because you don't want to be doing any damage as well. At the same time, there's, there's, there's a little bit of pain you can put up with, but too much pain, the numbness and tingling. You know, I suggest you stop just for safety reasons. Okay. So, so do that. As I said, two minutes uh, either side maximum. Okay. Um, 
and then once you've done that, you may want to work on your jaw. Okay, so the way we're going to try and do this today, there's two ways. I like to do it um, with a, uh, a table in front of me. So here's my table. There's two ways. You can basically let, let, let your hands rest on the table and put your hands on the side of the head here. So I'm going to start on the, this muscle here, the temporalis. I'm just gently warming up by moving your hands, your hands through your head, okay? So through your hair, rather, if you have hair. Gently stroke it, that gets the blood going in there. You do not have to do this particularly hard, just do it gently. Once you've done this for about, about 30 seconds or so, you can probably stop. Then start to use your finger tips, okay, and press on the side of your head. And as I said, this muscle goes up from here, just in front of the ear, all the way to the back of the head here, like a big piece of ham. And you may just want to get some trigger points. So dig around, see what you can find. I, I like to put my fingers in, I twist slightly, okay? Not too much pressure. Sometimes you think, if I put loads of pressure in, it's good. But actually, no, it can make it worse. Now, for me, my right side actually has some trigger points about here, right on the side of my head here. Okay, in particular, the one at that point there, and one at about that point there. Yeah, that's it. So we're going to hold on to those. And just hold on for about 30 seconds. Again, not too much pressure until you feel a bit of a change. And then gradually, gradually release the pressure over a period of about 10 to 15 seconds. And let the body adapt to you releasing the pressure. And then again, as before, just stroke through there. Now you may need to repeat that a few times because there may be other trigger points in there you want to work into. But now we want to come down a bit further. So we're going to go to the masseter. Okay, the masseter is one of the strongest mu uh, muscles of the body. Okay, comes into the jaw here. Okay, and it helps you bite things. So I like to use my thumbs for this, but I, I'm, I, you can feel under your cheekbones here where it attaches. You'll know it when you get to here because it gets quite tight for a lot of people. I, I just let, again let my head rest into my hands and dig my fingers in. And press here. Just work my way around the top of the joint so I can find some hard bits. And then I fix on those points there. Again, my fingers aren't doing anything more than just letting my head rest. I mean, you could if you want to press in the top as well, but I think you're going to create too much tension through your hands. You want to focus on these bits here primarily. It makes you look a lot younger when you do this as well, see? And this technique, we would call it inhibition. And I normally do this on my patients myself. Again, with this, you find a tender point. Don't push super hard. Put a little bit of pressure on to stimulate it. You press too hard, it's actually going to create more tension than anything else. Now hold that there. And very gradually very very slowly release it over a period of 10 to 15 seconds and then move down to the next point and what you can do with this as well it's just to stretch it out is open your jaw like this you can hold that there at the same time maybe hold for up to 10 seconds as well if you do this in front of a mirror you'll also notice that the jaw may deviate to one side more than the other, indicating there might be a muscle imbalance between the two sides. Okay, and release. Right, so you can try that. And then finally, of course, once you've done that, you can also come underneath the jaw here. You've got some of these other little muscles attach from the neck up into here. If you go deep enough and on the inside of the angle of the jaw, you can get some of the pterygoids as well. So you can get your fingers underneath the angle of the jaw, come forward a little bit, get a thumb up underneath there, both sides, and hook up and in, like in that angle, okay? It's particularly uncomfortable. So be careful. There's a nerve that comes down here as well. So watch. You you'll notice there's a notch in here. Don't press in there too much because it can get really tender. Needlessly. You 
You can take plenty of time, up to two minutes in each part. So you can see you can use two minutes on this area here, on the temporals, you can use up to two minutes on the jaw, or on the masses here rather, and two minutes on the material guys underneath here. After you've done that, of course, make sure you you relax the whole time. Okay, don't press too hard. You should be able to relax into every exercise you do. Okay, once you've finished this routine, then go and lay down again or stand up against the wall again. Just in this position, do the breathing exercises one more time. Okay, and that should keep you occupied for a bit longer. And that should just help to take some of the tension away. Um, one more thing you can try as well, if you want to enhance the um, your, your breathing. Um, and get the ribcage opened up, you can do this laying down. And the way I like to do it laying down is by using pillows or towels just to arch the thoracic spine, not the lumbar spine. So the lumbar spine is this bit here, the thoracic spine is between the shoulder blades here. And the way we can do this is like so. So I've got a nice arch pillow, I'm gonna make it, oh, I'm gonna make it a little bit bulkier. I'm placing this out here, and that will go between my shoulder blades. So I'm going to come and lay down. That's just around my shoulder blade area. I might just support my head by doubling up the pillow for my neck there. And let the arms drop out to the side, like so. And then breathing in slowly and deeply. In through the nose, out to the mouth. I can create an arch in my back, reversing the effects of gravity. You'll notice the pectoral muscles will get quite tight with this. So, if you wish to work a bit more on the pectorals, you can. Do my favorite arm opening stretch, which is to lay down onto your side. The knees bent at 90 degrees and the hips are 45. Bring your arm in the air. Make sure your hand is about head height. So if you notice it's not 90 degrees, it's slightly above 90. And then letting your body roll, okay, from the top down, not from not twisting from the, the waist, try to twist from the shoulder, like so. That creates a tension through the pectoral line. Holding the tummy in the whole time. You may need to support yourself by placing your hand under your ribcage like this. And again, the same thing on the other side. Arm head height. And roll the body, starting from the shoulder down, like so. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Sorry if the camera angle is a bit out there. I'll try that again so you can see a bit better. Making sure you feel a stretch through your pectoral muscle. And the whole time, focus on your breathing. Focus on breathing through your nose and breathing out through your mouth, okay? And try and breathe in for about five seconds and breathe out for five seconds. Everything you do is slow and very careful in particular because we're trying to switch on that parasympathetic nervous system which governs relaxation because relaxation is the key very often to getting better. We don't want you to be in a stressed out state. But anyway, give that a try and see how you get on and I uh, hope to see you in a new video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much.